today on Let the Bible Speak. As we pause this week as a nation to give thanks, we need to remember that gratitude is more than just words spoken in a prayer. It is an attitude, an attitude that can transform your life. And welcome to the program today. It's good to be with you as always to open up the Word of God and study His truth for a little while. We anticipate a busy week ahead with the holiday we call Thanksgiving. Perhaps you have great plans to get in the car or board an airplane and travel across the country to be with loved ones or you're expecting people to come to your home and gather around a table, enjoy a delicious meal and to express our gratitude for the bounty of blessings that God has given to us as a nation, to our families, and in our individual lives. I think that's a wonderful thing to do, something we look forward to from year to year. But I hope that on this particular Thanksgiving, you will be challenged to look at gratitude as much more than just a prayer, something we express from time to time when something good happens to us, but that we will begin to see gratitude as an attitude that permeates every single day and every single aspect of our life. You know, as a Christian, thankfulness should be a reflexive reaction to receiving blessings from others, most importantly God. Most of us really don't appreciate people who receive a gift or gesture of kindness without showing some kind of gratitude. But did you know that gratitude is not merely a reaction that we should have to what we perceive as good things we receive from God or anybody else, but that God expects us to be thankful in every circumstance in life. And when we come to view gratitude that way, that is a transformative thing. It will totally change your outlook on life. It's a hard expectation to live up to, but listen to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. He says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. Now, frankly, that's one of the hard sayings of the Bible. Not only give thanks to God, but give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father. It must have been a hard saying even for the man who penned those words. Do you live with the attitude of Paul? Are you thankful to God through every season and circumstance of life? And what does it say about us if we're not? I want to talk to you today about the attitude of gratitude. Stay with me for our study. Praise the Lord, ye hands adore Him. Praise Him, angels in the high. Solemnly just before Him. Praise Him, all His stars and light. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, for He has spoken. Worlds His mighty voice obey. Love is never shall be chosen and broken. For the Lord He has made. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the God of our salvation. Oh, There are four basic attitudes about life that make up four kinds of people. We encounter all four types of people on a daily basis and mark it down what kind of person they are will tell you how happy they are in life. You and I each fit into one of these groups and whichever one that is will tell us a lot about our relationship to God 
and to other people. It'll tell us a lot about ourselves. Now, the first group are those people who are constantly complaining and grumbling. Do you know someone like that? Are you like that? A dark cloud just seems to follow them everywhere they go. They can't look on the bright side of anything. The glass is always half empty. You could give them a million dollars, a clean bill of health, a nice home, a fine car, but I will guarantee you they will still find things to complain and murmur about. It's like the man who his wife offered to cook him eggs for breakfast one morning, and uh, he wanted one scrambled and one over easy, and uh, when she set the plate in front of him, he turned his nose up, and she said, well, what's wrong with it? And he said, you scrambled the wrong egg. Well, some people are just that way. They're critical by nature. Consequently, they're typically hard to get along with. Then there are people who don't really complain so much. They're just ungrateful. They take things for granted. They almost feel entitled to what they have. They rarely, if ever, stop to think about where their blessings come from, and they certainly don't give God any of the praise and glory for the bounty of their lives. These people will often display the same attitude toward others, finding it very hard to say thank you. They may be very prideful. And then there are those who do thank God when something obviously good happens to them. Maybe when someone they love or they themselves escape death or a serious accident or uh, when something they think is really important works out or goes their way. Well, that's better than the other two categories for sure. But there's a fourth kind of attitude that is better than them all. And that is to be thankful for all things all of the time. Now that's the kind of attitude that we are to have if we really have a right relationship with God. Did you know that one of the worst sins, according to the Bible, is the sin of ingratitude? As bad as murder, lying, adultery, perversion, stealing, idolatry, and all of those things are, did you know that the Bible teaches that it is the sin of ingratitude that leads to all of those other sins? That's right. Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 20, Paul said, For the invisible things of Him, or of God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Now Paul says that's what led the world away from God, uh, near the very beginning. They were not thankful. What does he mean? He means that God created a world for man to dwell in and have dominion over. He gave man everything he needed to live and thrive. He filled the earth with food, water, and beauty. He made man in his own image with the ability to love and appreciate beauty and goodness. But man didn't thank God for that. Because of his pride, his selfish lusts, and sinful desires, man didn't want to submit to God. He didn't want to acknowledge God as the source of life and blessing because that would make him, some, uh, make him subservient and indebted to God. So Paul says their ungrateful hearts rejected him. Now mark it down. When you meet someone who is ungrateful, you're dealing with a proud, self-indulgent, stubbornly independent person. And that's antithetical to uh, a person who pleases God. Unthankful people are never happy. Instead, they're filled with negativity, selfishness, self-pity, and bitterness. When you meet people like that, the root cause generally is ingratitude. And that makes them the enemy of God, the giver of all good blessings. Now look at what the sin of ingratitude has done to people since the beginning of time. For example, Adam. Now he was a perfect specimen of the human race. God created him in his own image. There were no genetic flaws, no difficulties or challenges to deal with. Sin brought all of that later. Adam, as he was created, was perfect. And God prepared him a garden filled with wonderful trees to eat from. He could eat from the tree of life and live forever. He didn't have to, he didn't have to toil as we do today to survive. God gave him a beautiful companion and gave them the marriage relationship to enjoy love, support, and mutual companionship. They only had one law to keep. God told them that they could eat of every tree of the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if they were to eat of that one tree, they would forfeit all of those things and they would die. Well, what happened? Was Adam grateful? Well, in reality, no, because he rebelled against the Creator who gave him all of that. Despite that, God was merciful and He began to unfold His work to redeem man. And in the course of time, He raised up a nation of chosen people. 
a people he chose for service to ultimately bring the Messiah into the world to save the world. He fed those people with manna from heaven and quail. He fought their battles for them. He clothed them. He led them. He made a covenant with them to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And of all of the nations of the earth, he chose them and made that wonderful promise to them to make them a great people and the heirs of his promises. And he made that agreement with the Israelites on the condition of their faithfulness to him. What a privileged position they occupied to be the chosen people of God, to be the nation who would produce the Messiah, who would save the world from its sin and ultimately redeem fallen humanity. But were they thankful? No, rather their history recorded throughout the Old Testament shows how that over and over again they reneged on their covenant with God. While they soaked up the blessings of God, they grumbled, complained, worshipped idols, and lived in sin and immorality. They had hardly got out of sight of the land of Egypt after the Exodus that instead of being grateful for the deliverance that God had granted them, they began to grumble about the conditions they faced in the desert. They weren't thankful. They were arrogant. And sadly, that's the history of most of humanity. The sad reality is that it seems the more we acquire, the more we are allowed to obtain, the more comfortable we become, the less grateful we are. That's ironic, but very true. Thankfulness and gratitude ought to lead us to worship and serve and love the Lord. Paul asked this question of the church in Rome in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4. He said, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Above all others, Christians should know how to be grateful. Not merely to be grateful when some temporal blessing comes along or when things are going our way, but to be always grateful, living in view of not only the physical blessings that God continually gives us, but even greater and more importantly, the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, to live with the continual attitude of gratitude. Now one day a year we set aside time to enjoy home, family, and friends, to return thanks to God for our blessings. That's been a tradition of our country for longer than we've been a country. Going back 400 years, people living in America have paused to thank God for the bounty of this land and the tremendous opportunities this new world offered us. That's all very well and good. We should do that. But the highest plane of living, the highest level of faith and spirituality, the key to contentment and joy is to learn to do, as Paul said in our text, to always give thanks to God. There's an old song that says, When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Another verse says, Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy that you are called to bear? Count your many blessings. Every doubt will fly, and you will keep singing as the days go by. Another verse says, When you look at others with their lands of gold, think that Christ has promised you His wealth untold. Oh, count your many blessings. Money cannot buy your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings and see what God has done. The psalmist says in Psalm 118 verse 1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. Psalm 103 and verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The 100th Psalm, the old 100th, verses 4 and 5, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name, for the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Now that's how we're to enter the presence of God, with an attitude of gratitude. Look again at Paul's command of the Ephesian church to us. Ephesians 5 and verse 20, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What are we to be thankful for? He says all things. Well, that includes more than we could ever name. Psalm 68 verse 19, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. You ever notice that little word selah within the scripture? That little word uh, is generally agreed to mean think about it. Meditate upon this. Think deeply about this. 
The psalmist says every day a new load of benefits comes our way. And that word salah means think about that. Contemplate that. Let that sink in. And certainly we should when we consider the uh, blessings and the multiplied bounties that God gives us on a daily basis. Every single day the God of heaven loads us down with blessing. Did you know that not only can you never count the blessings of a lifetime, you can't even count the blessings of a single day. I challenge you to try. Lamentations 3 verses 22 and 23, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Even the physical material universe in which we live is held together every second of every day by the will and the Word of God. Paul said in Colossians 1, 16 and 17, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things. Listen now, and by Him all things consist. Hebrews 1 and 3 says that He is upholding all things by the word of His power. The forces that propel and sustain the universe are constant and they are dependable. You might say, but those are immutable natural laws that explain all of that. Yes, but where did those laws come from? The very air that you breathe and every other necessary element to sustaining life minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, year by year is the blessing of God. The seasons that change, seed time and harvest, we may take them for granted, but they're all decreed. They're set up like clockwork by the architect of the ages, and we can depend on them year by year, season by season. His mercies are new every morning. James said in James 1 and verse 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All the dependable and constant things of life that make life possible and make life what it is exist and consist by the Word of God. Do you thank God for the food you eat every day? We waste more than we consume. We've even become a gluttonous society until we're the most obese culture in the world. The poorest people in this country have more to eat than many people in far off lands around the globe. Most of us have more clothes hanging in our closets than we can wear in a month or even a year. We have clean water to drink and homes to live in that look like mansions to billions of other people in other countries around the world. Don't grumble and complain about the home that you have and how the neighbor's house is nicer or how great it would be to live on the other side of town. Don't covet what somebody else has. The Bible calls that sin. One of the reasons I believe it's a sin is because it is a mark of ingratitude for what we do have. We have air conditioning to keep us comfortably cool in our homes in the summer, heat to keep us warm in the winter, cars to carry us wherever we want to go. Count your blessings and name them one by one. When you start to do that, when you make that a practice, you'll learn the attitude of gratitude. The Bible teaches that every single prayer we pray should be framed in thanksgiving and gratitude. Philippians 4 and verse 6, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Paul says that when you ask God for something, you do so with thanksgiving. Because why should God give you something else if you don't thank Him for what He's already given you? In fact, do you ever pray without asking for any favor from God? Do you ever just pray a prayer of thanksgiving? Do you ever just bow your head and pray, thanking God for the everyday blessings of life? Or do you find yourself taking those things for granted? Do you only thank God for some, quote, big blessing that comes along, but take for granted what He gives us every day? Do you thank Him for life itself? When Paul and Barnabas went to Lystra in Acts chapter 14, the idolaters there all began to worship those men like gods of some kind. And Paul rebuked their idolatry. But listen to what he says in Acts chapter 14, beginning in verse 15. And saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left, himself, uh, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. 
Friend, gratefulness is much more than what we say when we pray, as important as that is. It's more than a matter of being grateful for the abundance of blessings in our lives, most of all spiritual but temporal as well. Our heart should be continually overflowing with praise. We should be living with a constant attitude of gratitude. The goodness of God should lead us to repentance, consecration, service, worship, and dedication. That humility that comes with a grateful heart always causes us to realize our dependence upon God, our inferiority to God, our subservience unto God. Now notice what else Paul said in our text. He said, giving thanks always for all things. Yes, spiritual blessings and temporal blessings, but here's the real test of gratitude. If Paul had said to sometimes be thankful, that wouldn't be so hard to do. But he said always and for all things give thanks. Do you live with that kind of attitude toward God? You say, well, there are times in my life when everything's not exactly like I would like for it to be. Uh, things don't always go my way. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Some translations render that as whatever happens or in all circumstances give thanks. Oh, how we fall so short of Paul's admonition and his own example. Again, you may be thinking, well, there you are telling me to be grateful, but you just don't know the problems that I have. You don't know the suffering that I go through. No, I probably don't. But you know, I didn't write these words. Paul did. I didn't write the book of Ephesians where we took our text from. Paul wrote that. And do you know where he was when he wrote it? He was in prison, as he so often was. Do you know what happened to him in Ephesus where these people were to whom he wrote this letter? He had been lied about, abused, mistreated, and thrown out of the city. Read what it says about his visit there in the book of Acts. Paul suffered. Oh, the things Paul suffered. But you see, he suffered with a thankful heart. You may ask, does that mean I'm supposed to think that my problems are good? No, your problems are bad. But through it all, you can say that God is good. We're even to thank God in the trials and difficulties of life. And yes, that's hard. But it's the key to happiness, contentment, joy, and a godly life. And you might think about it this way. You simply have no idea of the trials, in the trials and difficulties of your life, as hard as they may be to bear, what God may be sparing you from. You may have no idea what grand purpose and scheme God has for your life in allowing you to suffer that trial, tragedy, or problem. You may not be able to see right now how God is shaping and molding you into the kind of person He wants you to be by the chastisement that He's allowing you to go through, which Paul spoke about in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. When you come to understand that, you can be thankful to God in all things because He's always good in all things, giving thanks always. There is joy divine that is ever
Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all of our past broadcasts plus extra videos including Let the Bible Speak classics all the way back to the 1960s. And get new updates, go to YouTube and search for Let the Bible Speak TV and click on subscribe. The greatest gift ever given was Jesus Christ, whom God sent to this earth to die upon the cross for your sins. Have you expressed gratitude to God for that wonderful gift? I don't mean have you merely verbalized your gratefulness, but have you surrendered your life to God? Have you come to Him in faith and repentance and obedience, become His child and become the disciple of the Lord Jesus? That's how you show gratitude for what He's done for you. And I hope if you've not taken those steps of gospel obedience, you'll consider very seriously doing so without delay. If you'd like a copy of our lesson today, a free printed copy, we'll be glad to send you one. Just simply ask for the lesson, The Attitude of Gratitude, and we'll get it on its way as soon as we can. Hope you'll make your plans to join me back here next Lord's Day for another Bible study. Also check us out online, ltbstv.org, and on our social media platforms. I hope you have a wonderful and a happy and safe Thanksgiving ahead. And I'll look forward, if the Lord wills, to seeing you back here next time. God bless you. Let the Bible Speak is brought to you by The Church of Christ. For more information, including our past broadcast and sermon transcripts, visit ltbstv.org. Thanks for being with us today. Join us next time for Let the Bible Speak.